On today's episode of the Cryptoverse, I would like to talk to you about three stories. I want to give you an update on the Brian Armstrong collectible that I bought yesterday on the live stream. Um, Vitalik's new consensus algorithm that effectively solves the problem of 51% attacks. And I'd also like to bring you some mental clarity, well, to a headline about Tether that was printed by the Coin Telegraph. So let's begin with the update on my Kryptons. So I featured this on the live stream yesterday. I was playing this new game on the Ethereum blockchain. And you may be surprised to hear that I no longer own Brian Armstrong, the founder of Coinbase, because he's been snatched off me by another user called Hoda, H-O-D-O-R. So if I go to the marketplace and then I search for Brian, you will see that he has been transferred from me to someone else. So let's see here, um, Brian, there are two Brian's here. One is Brian Armstrong and then is Brian Williams. So here's Brian Armstrong, CEO and founder of Coinbase. And you can see that this is one of my usernames, Sage. This is me yesterday that I bought on the live stream for 0.04 Ether. And now someone has bought them off me. So that's the bad news. The good news is that I doubled my money just in the way that this game, that's how it's supposed to work, right? I paid $14 for him uh, or the 0.04 Ether. And then the next person bought them for double that price plus the 6% fee for the platform. Yesterday, when I was playing this game live on the air and explaining it to you all, I was like, why isn't, ex why isn't the price exactly double every time? And then, I, and then I realized like the buyer pays a 6% premium, which is the fee. So that's why the price you know changes every time, not just exactly double, right? So anyway, if you have no idea what this game is or how to play it, then check out the live stream from yesterday where I went in to great detail about how it works. It's not even that complicated. I was just sort of spitballing, expl exploring all the different ways that uh, it could manifest. And if you, you can do this for money if you want but you can just do it for fun as well. So no, it's not sponsored at all. I don't know why anyone thought it was. There was no sponsorship markings of any kind. And I even explained twice on the air that I found out about it because it was advertised on CoinMarketCap on the top banner. And I clicked on it and I thought, people are gonna be clicking on this. I need to have a look at it and make sure it's legit, right? So that's why I did it. Um, I still don't know if it's legit. What I do know is that the Ether to buy my uh, Brian Armstrong off me is now in my MetaMask, MetaMask wallet. So that's a certainty that actually happened, right? So I'm clear on that one. Unfortunately, since my live stream yesterday, the Krypton that I actually wanted to buy, which was Andreas Antonopoulos, uh, I actually spoke about this on the air, didn't I? Andreas has actually skyrocketed in price. So if I put Andreas into the search box, he was, he was hanging around $50 when I looked at him yesterday. So if I go into the details of his transaction history here, um, the, the reason I think this has happened, he, um, is probably because someone saw it on the live stream, right? The, someone saw me do the live stream, heard my intention to buy Andreas and tried to front run me, which they have now done. So Andreas is now trading at 0.89 ether which is a lot more than I want, am willing to pay for him. And I think the reason this happened is because on my live stream or since my live stream, you can see here, there were two purchases yesterday. What a coincidence, right? And I say it's a coincidence because those two purchases happened right after my live stream. And three weeks prior to that, Andreas had not moved at all. That's not a coincidence, is it? So it did occur to me this is this is actually a fun way to support the cryptoverse financially. I made that fourteen dollars on Brian Armstrong. So what I did is I took that money and I bought another one. And this time I waited for the transaction to finish before I mentioned who it is. And what I'm looking for, I'm looking for you know people who could potentially go up in value or be in high demand. So I bought Michael Bloomberg, and that transaction is now confirmed. And here he is. Michael Bloomberg is now in my wallet. So now Michael Bloomberg is the founder of Bloomberg, Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Financial Terminal, uh, the news outlet, Bloomberg. This is the guy. This is the guy that founded it. And um, he's a billionaire. He's made himself a self-made billionaire. A New York financier sort of guy. Wasn't he the mayor of New York at one point, I think, as well? 
But I've literally just bought this guy this morning before recording this episode. So I haven't changed his gag line yet. Um, I'll think of something witty to say. But you can see other owners of Michael Bloomberg. Again, he started off at 0.001 Ether, I think as most Kryptons do, and has now gone up 40 times that price. Well, I've paid 40 times the original price for him. And then the next price is double that again, right? So if you want to grab yourself a Michael Bloomberg and a donate to the Cryptoverse, go ahead and buy Michael Bloomberg off me. And uh, the $12 that I paid for him will, will, sorry, the $6 that I paid for him will turn into $12 and I'll make like a $6 profit on it. So it's a way of donating while getting something for it. And I'll take that money and I'll go find someone else that I think is going to go up in value. So uh, just a little fun game that we can play with the donations here. All right, enough of that. I'll, maybe I'll just feature this a few minutes when I've got an update because it's kind of fun. It's fun to me anyway, so that's what I'm going to talk about. All right, so now on to something more serious, which is like Vitalik's new consensus algorithm. I found this story on blockmanity.com. So the headline is Vitalik's new consensus algorithm is to make 51% attacks obsolete by requiring uh, 99% of nodes to attack. Well, that turns it into a 99% attack then, doesn't it? Rather than a 51% attack. Now, the biggest problem with these kinds of stories for both you, dear subscriber, and me as your commentator and guide through the cryptoverse is that it's impossible to verify if you're not an expert mathematician yourself. And I'm not, right? I did, I did, I suppose you call it basic math at a computer science level with set theory and as much math as we needed to get through the programming modules, but consensus algorithms, mm, yeah, not exactly on the same level. So I'm assuming you're not an advanced mathematician either. Um, that's, I don't suppose there are many advanced mathematicians watching the cryptoverse. But anyway, because it relies on that kind of expert knowledge to validate this yourself, we have to then defer to other experts, right, who have the same expertise, who can then tell us whether Vitalik is full of crap or not, right? And then we listen to their comments, and then we decide who we believe. But it's, it's purely on faith in the individual, isn't it? We can't actually verify for ourselves who's who's right. Um, and I, like I said, I'm, not, I'm assuming you are like me and do not have PhD level math skills that allow you to fully comprehend this new uh, consensus algorithm and then say, oh, this is actually the solution, right? So we just have to take in the news on a conceptual level and then tweak our long-term perspective on Ethereum as an investment, right? That's the way I'm looking at this. Let's, assuming this is true, we don't see massive evidence to the contrary or massive opinion opposing what Vitalik is saying, or well, we can take this as strengthening, strengthening Ethereum's fundamentals, right? So it says things like this. The opening line is, in a highly complex paper, it says. Well, again, depends how much math you know as to depending whether you think it's highly, you know, highly complex or not. And then it says, in a highly complex paper, Ethereum's co-founder Vitalik Buterin has proposed a new kind of consensus algorithm which requires just 1% of nodes to be honest. And vice versa, in order for the attack to work, it needs 99% of them to be dishonest, right? If that's true, that's far superior to anything else out there, including EOS, which, requ which requires just a third of block producers to be honest, which is even better than you know, requiring 51%. So 51% attack for you know Bitcoin, that's typically why we call it a 51% attack. EOS improved on that, whereas you need, um, it's more like a 67% attack in EOS. You need 67% of the block producers to be dishonest to, to fork the chain, right? But now what Vitalik is saying is, is advanced this consensus algorithm to the point where 99% of the of the uh, nodes would have to be dishonest in order for it to work. That's If that's true, that's pretty secure. <laughs> when I say pretty, I mean it's 99% secure. I mean, it's super secure. The most secure blockchain out there, if this is true. So moving on, I've got another bit highlighted here. In the yellow, it says, The new algorithm was first invented by Leslie Lamport in 1982 who was a computer scientist who received the Turing Award for his work on distributed systems, and Vitalik used Leslie's solution in terms of the blockchain. 
So he's applied, uh, he's done that thing where you fold a solution from one discipline into another to create innovation, right? And there, there are even, you know, niche disciplines within the world of math and consensus algorithms. So I'm not saying you took a cooking technique and folded it into the world of cryptography or blockchain math, uh, but even within each of the specialisms, there are, you know, micro specialisms and that's what PhD level is about, right? Really, 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 really specialised stuff. Anyway, that's the kind of creativity, you know, this this looking at um, looking at solutions sli slightly outside of your niche area and then seeing how you can fold that in and apply it to what you're doing. To my mind, that's the kind of creativity that I attribute to the likes of like the Satoshi, Satoshi Nakamoto's of this world. So I'm not going to get into technically how this works because, as I said a minute ago, I don't think that's the level we need to operate on in order to make investing decisions, right? What I do think is valuable to know finally in this article is the green bit that I've highlighted about Ethereum's future. It's a, Ethereum has one of the most active developer communities in the world of blockchain. Currently, the Ethereum team is shifting from proof of work mining based on you know, proof of work consensus to a proof of stake based one. The exact timeline for the implementation has not been provided. It is interesting to note that once the proof of stake based consensus algorithm is implemented on Ethereum, the block reward will also drop from 3 Ether to 0 0.6 Ether. So still, we have no real concrete timeline on when Ethereum is going to move to proof of stake. So that means when Ethereum does move to proof of stake, the, the capacity to process transactions is going to go up significantly. Right? The, the 15 or transactions a second that Ethereum could do right now that's largely handcuffed because of proof of work. And when they move to proof of stake, that's how come EOS is so fast because it uses proof of stake, which can produce blocks much quicker and come to consensus far quicker. And that's why Ethereum is moving to it because it's just so much faster. Some people prefer proof of work and they say it's more secure and all the rest of it, but that's not the debate we're having right now. The principle is that what we know for sure is proof of stake will allow them to produce uh, transactions a lot quicker. So that's from an investor's point of view, we can take that in and think, okay, Ethereum already is, you know, the leading blockchain for smart contracts and decentralized applications. And the only thing preventing it from absolutely dominating is its speed and cost of transactions, right? So the speed will be solved largely by moving to proof of stake. It'll give it a significant capacity boost. But the other thing to look at is that also the, um, the block reward is going to drop from 3 Ether to 0 0.6 Ether. And I see that is because you'll get a lot of savings. When you're no longer doing proof of work, you're not burning so much energy, you're not having to spend so much money to produce blocks in the first place, right? Blocks, the cost of producing blocks goes down to near zero since um, the um, you don't have to produce hashes, right? And nonces and burn all the electricity to find um, difficult, precious numbers. You don't have to do that anymore. You just have to be selected as the block producer for that round you just sign the block, right? Everyone else verifies it and Bob's your uncle, you get the reward for that. And then based on how much you're staking increases the chances that you will get selected to be the miner in that round. So that's the basis on which you get chosen to be a to, to be a you know block producer to add the next block to the chain. It's not about who burns the most energy and finds the precious number. So there we go. It's I don't think that's it's not a bad thing. If you drop the reward from three ether to 0.6 now with a proof of work system in place that's bad because it means mining suddenly becomes way less profitable and will cause havoc whereas in a proof of stake system it doesn't matter so much because everyone's on the level playing field and then anyone can produce blocks with just regular hardware quite frankly all right then next story this one about tether then so the coin telegraph the article is the headline is controversial stable coin tether issues a new batch of USD T tokens worth $50 million. <sighs> to be pretty honest, I'm tired of these stories. To which you might say, well, why are you featuring on the show then? Well, the answer to that is because there's a very simple explanation as to why $50 million worth of USDT may have just come into existence. All it would take would be to, for someone to have just deposited 50 million US dollars with Tether Corporation. And as a result of that, they would be issued with 
50 million USDT. That's how the system works. So I don't see how this kind of thing makes headlines. It, that's almost like um, pu publishing a headline saying, Chris Coney deposits $50 million to his Coinbase account. Okay, so what, right? It's the same sort of thing. Actually, on the other side, I do know why this made the headlines, right? And I have the same issue, but I think it's a separate issue. Tether still have yet to produce an audit to actually prove they have all the dollars to back their tethers. So that's all I really want to say about this story. There's, there's nothing controversial about 50 million new tethers being created in one day. That just must mean that someone deposited $50 million. But what does remain, and to me is a separate issue, so I'm drawing a very definitive line in between the two things, is the lack of proof that Tether have all the dollars to cover the Tether in circulation. And this is the ongoing kind of, what do you call it, chink in the armor that allows news media outlets to, to continue to print articles like this, which I was just saying I'm actually tired of. I personally don't touch Tether, right? But neither do I hate on it horrendously, right? I may have published some probably negative stories in the past, but, you know, Everyone's open to changing their position and constantly new information is coming in. So I'm constantly adjusting my position. So I'm telling you, as of today, I have no problem with Tether, Tether as it is. I personally just choose not to use it because of a lack of proof that they're all backed. And what we don't want, and this is this is why, this is the real, the positive intention behind these kind of headlines, is the Coin Telegraph would say, well, we're, we're actively trying to protect people from the day when you know tether implodes and again that's speculation but until that happens it you don't know either way do you you don't know whether it's legit or not legit it's like the schrodinger's cat thing you know you put the poison in the box you put the cat in the box close the box and there's no windows no way to see into it so the question is, is the cat dead or alive well it's neither and it's both because until you open the box you don't know whether the cat's dead or alive if it's eaten the poison or not but while the box is closed, you have to assume the cat is both dead and alive, or, or neither, or both. So similarly, <laughs> you have to assume Tether is both solvent and insolvent because of a lack of proof, right? Until we crack open the box and look at the audit, that's the only way we'll know. So speculation in either direction is equally valid. So that's why that's why I just wanted to say that today. All right, those are the, all the three stories I wanted to talk to you about today. So. Thanks very much for joining me today, guys. If you like this episode, go ahead, hit the like button and get subscribed. If you didn't like it, well, you can hit that button if you want to. And um, also, if you would like to take either of my introductory courses on cryptocurrencies, such as the secrets of the Bitcoin triangle or the digital money revolution, you go to my website, it's cryptoversity.com, click on courses, and these two pages will lead you to a discount link where you can get the courses for just $19.99. That's an absolute bargain if you ask me. So also, if you go to twitter.com forward slash Chris Coney INT, which stands for Chris Coney International, you'll find my Twitter profile, which is where you should absolutely totally follow me. And if you go to cryptoversity.com forward slash notifications, you'll be able to join my email list and then get an email every time I release a new episode. Sometimes people complain that despite subscribing on YouTube, they just don't get notifications when a new episode goes live. Other than that, I'll be back with the next episode of the Cryptoverse. So until then, it's me, Chris Coney saying, bye for now.